Electric motors work by having a coil or winding wound around a rotating element called the rotor. And when current passes through the winding, it produces a magnetic field, uh, just like any inductor does. And that magnetic field is uh, attracted to the poles of some field magnets on the outside of the motor. This is enough to attract uh, one side of the rotor to a particular side of the magnet. And uh, in order to keep the rotor moving, uh, the polarity is switched every half revolution, and that's through these brushes that make intermittent contact with the uh, two uh, ends of the coil. Next, let's translate that idea into the following mechanical and electrical systems. On the left, we have an electrical system that uh, includes a voltage source. The windings actually have both resistance and inductance. And then there's another feature of the winding, which is that when it rotates, the rotation also induces a backwards voltage, also called back EMF or back electromotive force. On the mechanical side of the system, there's a mass which uh, is meant to indicate the inertia of the rotor, and the torque acting on the rotor is going to be proportional to the current flowing through the electrical side of the system. And there are two constants of interest. Km is also known as the motor constant. It describes the proportionality between the current and the torque. The second is Kg, or, or the generator constant, which describes how much back electromotive force or back voltage is produced as a function of the velocity of the rotor. Next, let's derive the differential equation for the motor, where we'll start with the electrical side, and we can use Kirchhoff's voltage law to find the loop current through the system. The voltage drops are minus ES plus R plus LS times I plus EB is equal to zero, which we can solve for I, uh, which is just going to be equal to ES minus EB divided by R plus LS. Similarly, we can look at the mechanical side of the system where we sum the torques, and that's going to just be equal to T is equal to J times S times omega, or J omega dot. Of course, we can substitute in our uh, motor laws. So we have Km times I for the torque, and then on the electrical side, the back EMF is Kg omega over R plus LS. Let's combine both of these. And what we end up with is Js omega, which is Km times I, which is Es minus Kg omega over R plus Ls, where we have R plus Ls times Js omega is equal to Km times Es minus Kg omega. Let's collect all of the terms. We get Jl S squared omega plus Jr times S omega plus Km Kg omega is equal to Km times Es. So this is the differential equation for the electrical, electromechanical system. We can solve for the torque as follows. Remember that we said that the torque is equal to Km times I, and we already found an expression for I. Since we're interested in steady speeds, we get to make a simplification, which is that we get to treat anything with an S in it as zero, because uh, we're only interested in constant values. What we end up with is T is equal to Km over R times E minus Kg omega. And generally, this is going to show a decrease in torque as a function of omega. And uh, we can, uh, you can see this is linear in omega, so we expect a straight line. Now let's try to figure out what the intercepts are. So first of all, we can plug in omega equals 0. And if that were the case, then t is equal to km over r times e. So in other words, we know where the torque is going to be at omega equals 0. It's km over r times e. The next case that we can solve for is the intercept with t equals 0. So if we want to solve for t equals 0, what we end up with is that e has to be equal to kg times omega. In other words, uh, the torque is zero when omega is equal to E divided by Kg. And then there's a straight line 
between the two. And what this shows is that the torque decreases with speed. And we give two names to these two extremes. First of all, at uh, torque equals zero, this is the fastest speed that we expect from the system. We call this the load, no load speed. And then uh, for the uh, torque, we also have a case when uh, the system is not moving, and we call this the stall torque. So the two quantities of interest are the stall torque and the no load speed. Let's quickly summarize what we learned about motors. First of all, a uh, motor has an electrical coil which induces a torque, and that coil also has resistance and inductance. The mechanical rotor has inertia, and its uh, torque that's induced by the coil is proportional to the current flowing through the coil. The motion of that rotor also induces a backwards voltage that's going to act on the coil. We also described the torque speed curve which says that the torque decreases as a function of speed. In this system, there's a stall torque, which describes the highest torque that can be produced, which also occurs at zero speed. And we also described another quantity called the no load speed, which is the highest speed that can be produced, which occurs when there's zero uh, external torque acting on the system.